Yo, what's going on my friends? You're watching JavaScript for Beginners at Lesson 42 and in this video I want to talk about JavaScript timers. <laughs> Alright then guys, so before we jump into any code whatsoever, I just wanted to show you this quick example of how timers are used in JavaScript. Now you see this banner at the top here, how it keeps changing image every 3 seconds or so? That is a JavaScript timer in action. And essentially what we're doing is in the code we're saying, hey, every three seconds or so, I wanna fire a function which is gonna change this image, okay? Now in this tutorial, I'm not gonna create something like this, I just wanna strip it down to the bare bones and show you how to use timers. But maybe in the future I'll do a tutorial series showing you how to create something like this. So now we know what they use for, let's jump back into the code and start coding one ourselves. All right then, so as you can see, I've got this dead simple HTML page open right here. I've got the styles linked up in the head. Then I've got this div with an ID of message right here and a couple of paragraphs inside. And then at the bottom, I've got this test.js linked up as well. I'll go over what this is later on. But for now, I just wanna jump into the style.css and show you what I've done with this div with an ID of message. I've just given it some basic styles, which is gonna make it red with a border and central. And you'll also notice I've made the opacity equal to zero, which is why you currently can't see it. But when we apply a class of show to that ID, then it's gonna give it an, uh, an opacity of one, which is gonna mean it's gonna be visible. And that transition from zero to one is gonna be smooth because I've set up the transitions right there. So it's gonna look like it's fading in when we apply a class of show to this message ID. Cool, so I'm gonna jump over to test.js and we're gonna start writing this JavaScript so that after say three seconds when the page loads, we can fade in that message. All right then, so the first thing I need to do is store that message ID in a variable. So I'll say var my message equals document dot get element by ID and the ID we need is message right awesome next thing I want to do is create a function which is going to fade in that message so I'll say function we'll call this show message and then within that function I just want to fade in this message now the message ID is stored within this variable so we can just say my message dot class name equals show and that's all we're doing we're giving that message a class name of show so let's save that however this won't fire until this is called and we don't want this to be called until three seconds after the page loads so this is where we use a javascript timer now there's a couple of inbuilt methods in javascript they are set timeout and set interval now they have two different kind of functionalities. The one I'm going to focus on first of all is set timeout. So all we need to do is write set timeout and then call that function with the brackets. Now within these brackets we need to pass through two parameters. The first parameter is the function that we want to call and that is going to be show message. Just like that. And the second parameter is after how long do we want this function to fire? And I'm gonna say 3000, and this is milliseconds by the way, so that is essentially three seconds. So what's going on here guys is that we're saying, look, I wanna set a timeout so that after three seconds, I want this function right here, show message, to fire. And then this is gonna happen, which is gonna give the class um, show to this element, and then hopefully it's gonna fade in. All right, so let's refresh over here and count to three. And there we go, it fades in, perfect. So that there, my friends, is set timeout. Now I said there were two methods, what's the other one? The other one is set interval, and that's the type of method we'd use if we were to create a image slider like you saw in the example, because it's repeatedly calling a function every three seconds or so. This here just calls the function once, set interval calls it many times, all right? So let's get rid of this here, and I wanna jump back into the index file and uncomment this stuff right there. We can get rid of this now, I'll just delete it. So this right here is just an empty div tag with a color, uh, with an ID of color changer. And what I wanna do with this is make it so that it's a square block and it changes color every three seconds or so. 
right? So we'll save that, jump into the style and uncomment some styles that I made earlier. And right here you can see again, I've just given it some basic styles so that it's a little square in the middle. It's got a color or background color of white to begin with. And then I've set up these transitions so that when we change the color, it, it's like a, a smooth transition, all right? So let's save that and jump back into the test.js file and let's start creating this functionality. Now, this time the first thing I need to do is grab that element in the index file, this one right here, color changer. So let's say variable color changer equals document dot get element by ID and the ID is color hyphen changer, perfect. So that's stored in a variable. Now I want to make another variable called colors and I'm going to set this equal to an array. And within this array, I'm going to set all the colors that I want this element to cycle through. Now we've seen arrays, we can pass through strings in them and that's all I'm going to do. I'm going to pass, few, uh, pass through a few strings, red, blue, um, green and pink, why not? Okay, so that is our array. And then thirdly, I want to create a final variable called counter, and I'm going to set that equal to zero. And this here, my friends, is going to count which position we are in in the array. So when the block is red, it's going to be in position zero. When the counter scoops to one, then we're going to call this blue and it's going to change to blue. When the counter goes to two, we're going to call green and it goes to green because this is position zero, one, two, three, right? Okay, so that's what the counter is for. Next thing we need to do is create that function which is going to change the color of this block, right? So the function will be called uh, change color. And then within here, what we need to do is access the style properties of this color changer. So we'll say color changer dot style and the property we want is the background property because we're going to change the background color. And we're going to set that equal to colors, which is this array, and we're going to call through the position of the counter. Whatever position the counter is at, at that time, we're going to call that variable or that value. Yeah. So at position zero, this is going to be red. A position one is going to be blue and whatever position it's in it's going to call that value all right so every time we call this change color function i want to add one to the counter so that next time around it goes from zero to one to two to three makes sense right now last thing we need to do is use our set interval function so we just write set interval that's how it's written in JavaScript. And then within these brackets, we pass through two parameters again. First of all is the function we want to call, which is change color. And then second of all is how often we want to call it. Again, I'm going to say 3000 milliseconds, so three seconds. So guys, what's going on is we're saying, look, every 3000 milliseconds or every three seconds, call this function change color. All right. So let's save that right now and refresh over here starts off as white because that's what the CSS does to it. Then it changes to red, then three seconds later blue, and then hopefully green, yep, and then pink. Perfect. But now it's stuck at pink because the counter is going up and up and up every time. So it might be four, then five, then six, and we don't have those positions in the array. The array just runs from zero to one, two, three, okay? So when the counter gets to three, then we need to reset it back to zero for this to cycle through. Make sense, right? So let's go up here and create an if statement. And within this if statement, I want to say if the counter is greater than or equal to the colors dot length, that's the length of this array, then we want to reset this counter back to zero. So we'll say counter equals zero and save that. Now, when we click refresh, this should cycle all the way through again. So red, then blue, hopefully. Yep. Green. And then after pink, it should hopefully go back to red. Yep. And do the whole thing again. Perfect. Now, there's one more thing I want to show you, and that is how to stop a timer. Now, just like we have set timeout and set interval, we also have 
clear timeout and clear interval. And we use those methods to stop a timer. So what I want to do is make it so that when you click this, the whole thing stops, the timer stops, and it doesn't continue to cycle through the colors. So let's set up that event. We'll say color changer, because that's the element right here that we've stored there, yeah? Dot on click. And we're going to set this equal to a function. And then within this function, I want to say stop this interval. Now to do that, I need to store this interval in a variable. So we'll create a variable right here and we'll say my timer equals set interval change color 3000. And what this is doing, oops, is just storing this interval in this variable so that we can use this variable later on when we want to stop this interval. This is like a controller for this variable, uh, for this interval. So we write the function clear interval and then within this brackets here we just say which interval we want to stop and it's stored in my timer so we'll pass that through and that is going to clear this interval so that it stops cycling through the colors so let's also add a text change we'll say color change oops color changer not change color changer dot inner html and we'll set that equal to timer stop so that text in here shows up when we've clicked it to say that the timer has stopped. All right, let's save that and refresh and let it cycle through just a couple of colors. And when it gets to blue, I'll click on that and it says timer stopped and hopefully now it's not gonna carry on. Yeah, perfect. All right guys, so that is how we stop a timer and that is timers as well. So if you have any questions about this whatsoever, feel free to comment down below. Uh, otherwise, if you enjoy these videos, don't forget to subscribe, share and like, and I'll see you guys in the next one.